You smell that? Soak it in, baby. It's mock draft season. That's what that is. Take a big whiff of it because mock drafts are here. They are all over the place. And I don't know about you guys, but I just love absorbing mock drafts just to see different possibilities, right? Whether or not you like to see what those picks are, I just can't get my eyes on enough mock drafts. So with that being said, we're going to look at ESPN's brand new seven-round mock draft, seeing who they had Cleveland selecting with their eight picks. But I want to update everyone on the sub-race battle we are doing this week with our AFC North foes. So after the first couple days of the battle, I mean, Steelers Talk has a very, very slim lead on us, but we picked up, I think, 89 subscribers from the last time we put out this call. We have buried the Ravens' rundown. They are 10 feet below the ground. Now we're coming for Steelers Talk and Jack Sperry. So hit that sub button if you are ready for just a changing of the guard in the AFC North. I know it might just seem like a dumb YouTube battle between two AFC North teams, but I am tired of, of reading Steelers fans' tweets about how the Browns are still a bunch of nobodies that have never won anything. We're coming for Pittsburgh, and the Browns are going to beat the shit out of the Steelers this year. Now, Cleveland's 2023 draft picks, in case you don't remember, after the Elijah Moore trade, two-thirds, a pair of fourths, a pair of fifths, a sixth, and a seventh. So let's get past the uh, boring mumbo-jumbo, and let's get right into ESPN's mock draft. Here's who they had the Browns taking at 74 overall, it is Keandre Coburn, the defensive lineman out of Texas. He is a whale of a human being. Six foot two, 332 pounds. For reference, like Jordan Elliott, Perion Winfrey, Tommy Togiai, previous Barry selections, about 30 to 40 pounds lighter. Now, NFL.com does prospect grades, and they gave Coburn 6.19, which is good backup with potential to develop into starter. Hey, in round three, that's not going to you know be a major red flag for me. He started 45 games at Texas, so a very durable player during his time in Austin. 95 tackles, 15 tackles for loss, six and a half sacks, and three forced fumbles. Now, I am a guy just like you guys watching. So when I saw this pick, the first thing I did was I looked to my Texas friend across uh, the way from me here, and I said, what do you know about Coburn? And he's like, he is a very difficult run, uh, very difficult player to run against, an excellent run stopper, and a nice rotation of Tomlinson, Winfrey, and Coburn. That would do wonders for this run defense that was simply missing in action last season. Now, Lance Zerline over at NFL.com does write-ups on all of the NFL draft prospects. Here's what he had on our Texas friend. A stout but athletic nose tackle with nimble feet. Coburn can sit down and muddy run, muddy run lanes or create difficulties for pin and pull blocking schemes with his interior agility. While he's not a three-down lineman, he does have the bull rush and activity level to cause issues as a rusher. He is a true nose tackle, a run stopper. I haven't seen him really going in round three much at all. Jordan Reed did this mock draft for ESPN, and he's got some interesting spots for players, but it does sort of serve as a good reminder of the draft never goes like mock drafts do, right? Last year, we had N'Kobe Dean as a first-round player. He somehow fell to round three, so it is a good reminder of, like, take your medicine on not every mock draft is going to have each player in the right round, but round three for a non-three-down player and just a rotational run stopper does feel like it's on the earlier side for this type of pick. Now, I want to know, what position do you think Cleveland should draft first? Is it defensive line? Is it wide receiver? Very curious what you have to say, so let me hear it in the comments section below. This is the pinned comment. Trey Palmer is the next selection in ESPN's mock draft. 98 overall coming out of Nebraska. His combine measurements, 6 foot, 192 pounds. Pretty average size, but he plays a lot faster. NFL.com's prospect grade for him, 5.83. Average backup or special teamer. Now, he set a single season receiving record in 2022 for Nebraska. He actually accounted for nearly... 35%, if I remember correctly, of all of Nebraska's offensive yards. Now, that wasn't very difficult to do because they were one of the worst Power 5 programs. Shout out Scott Frost. But 1,000 yards and 9 touchdowns on a 
awful Nebraska team? Yeah, that's going to pop up on some people's radars. Now, here's what Lance said on Trey Palmer. Could be a spot for the Browns to add a young wideout, especially a speedster. Palmer, who ran a 4-3-3 second 40-yard dash at the Combine, checks the criteria boxes required for Cleveland prospects while also bringing down downfield ability. He averaged 14.7 yards per carry on 71 receptions. So Palmer is a big play waiting to happen. He is very reliant on his God-given athletic ability, and that's great in college. Doesn't always actually carry over to the NFL. When everyone is super fast, I don't think he is just another track star. He is great with the ball in his hands. He is great after the catch and whatnot. But I think that there are some valid concerns of, can he do the little things right? Can he run good routes? Can he get short yardage? Or is he simply just a go-route player? And if he is, and that cash is in one to two times every other week, yeah, that's no problem with me, right? If he can be a 600-yard, four-touchdown wide receiver three or four in round three, that is awesome value right there. So this is a sneaky pick to look on. I know the Browns are also meeting or have met with uh, Houston's wide receiver, Tank Dell. So they're clearly looking into speedy wide receivers, which has been the theme all offseason long. We've got another Texas Longhorn on this mock draft. This one is linebacker DeMarvian Overshawn. So DeMarvian Overshawn, I once again asked my Texas friend Jeffrey Cooperstein, hey, what can you tell me about DeMarvion? He raved about him, okay? He is a sideline-to-sideline -side linebacker who is just involved in every element of the play. He can stop the run. He is good in coverage. He can come up and rush the passer as well. He is a do-it-all linebacker. He might not excel at any one spot, but he definitely comes in a, as a very well-rounded rookie. 249 tackles during his time at UT, 30 and a half tackles for loss, nine sacks and three interceptions. So he clearly can be a contributor in every facet of the defensive game. Then we look at the Browns linebacker room and it serves as a good reminder. I'm looking at three starters, two are on one year contracts. Not likely both are going to come back in 2024. So maybe try and find a replacement for at least one of these players in this year's draft so that when 2024 rolls around, you're not forced to start a rookie or find some veteran free agent you really weren't all that you know excited about signing because you had no one in the wings to take over after 2023. Another way to look at this is he's kind of just a little bit of a bigger JOK, right? Jeremiah Usukoromoa is a speedy linebacker. At one point, Overshawn was a safety. JOK is more or less a bigger safety. So you kind of got two similar players. We know Andrew Barry liked that in JOK. He could strike again with Overshawn. All right, the fourth round selection for Cleveland here is running back Kendra Miller out of TCU. If you watched the Horn Frogs at all during college football this past year, you probably noticed that they had a lot of speedy players on their offense. Miller was definitely the speediest of them all. So, in his career, 2,400 yards and 26 touchdowns, an average of 6.7 yards per carry. He is just one big play waiting to happen. He can do well out of the pass formation, Pass formations, not the best blocking running back, but not many running backs coming out of college are. So that would be an area that he needs to improve on. I'm a big fan of this pick altogether because you are looking for a lightning to Nick Chubb's thunder, right? I'm interested in finding running backs that can be successful in 2023 and 2024 with Nick Chubb here. And finding a back that complements him like Miller and adding some receiving ability to this room in round four. Yeah, him and Jerome Ford can duke it out for RB2. Let the best guy win the job. And the Browns would be in a good spot at the running back position. Now, we've got more mock draft picks from ESPN to look at in just a brief moment. But first, the NFL draft, speak of the devil, is right around the corner. So make sure you go to chatsports.com slash Browns hat. Use that link to get the official Cleveland Browns 2023 NFL Draft hat. I put that link in the comments and the description of today's video. 
In round five, by some miracle, the Browns found safety Jamie Robinson. I was talking about him at round two at one point. This might be this year's Perrion Winfrey if he somehow fell to Cleveland in round five. The Florida State Seminole, originally at South Carolina in his career, 180 tackles, seven interceptions, 16 pass breakups. I can't say just enough how big of a fan I am of the player and, more importantly, of the pick in round five, which I don't know how much Jordan Reed had to drink before he started this mock draft, but clearly he had more than just one dog bowl because he's mocked to go round three-ish, maybe slips into four, but falling to five is a huge fall for Robinson. But if it happens, the Browns could have a great safety duo or trio moving forward of Delpit, Thornhill, and Robinson. And if they ultimately don't re-sign Delpit, Robinson and Thornhill afterwards would make a really nice safety tandem. So he is a huge sleeper for me if he really is a round five player. I think he's closer to three, maybe even early four. But hey, let me know what your draft sleepers are, right? Do the whole class a favor. You know, share your homework. Let everyone peek at your draft sleepers in the comment section. And I'll be sure to check them out too so I can put those guys on my radar because when the Browns don't draft till round three, we are all in the business of draft sleepers. We are majoring in draft sleepers and minoring in underrated draft prospects. That is the Cleveland Browns 2023 draft plan. Speaking of draft sleepers, this one makes no sense. I'll be honest. ESPN had Nick Herbig, the edge rusher out of Wisconsin, going to Cleveland in round five. Listen, he's a very, very good player. His three-year uh, time in Madison as a starter, he put up phenomenal stats, right? 21 career sacks, 36, uh, and seven pass breakups. He did a lot of great things for the Badgers. Uh, 36 tackles for loss. I mean, it really makes no sense how he is here, and that's the point. He's not going to be in round five. I mean, Dane Brugler, who I think is the best NFL draft guru, if you will, from The Athletic, he has Herbig in his top 100 big, big board at like pick 676. This is round five. We're in the hundreds at this point. That is way too far away from where he's actually going to end up. If Herbig and Robinson are there in the fifth round, the Browns are the winners of the 2023 NFL Draft because of their fifth-round selections because they got second- and third-round talent in round five. Give it to me, baby, if it's actually possible, but I don't really think it is. But Herbig, whoever he ends up with, it's going to be a good selection. I'm a big fan of the player. In round six, Jer Jerome Carvin, offensive lineman from yours truly's alma mater at the University of Tennessee, he is a flexible offensive lineman, right? He has not been etched into stone at any one spot. He bounced around for Tennessee, depending on where they needed him as injuries popped up. And right now, the Browns are looking for some more depth on the interior offensive line. And Carvin could come in and compete for a roster spot. Is he a lock to make it? No six-rounders are really locks, but they're definitely more likely than less likely. And in round seven... They went cornerback Cameron Mitchell out of Northwestern. This is a special teamer type of pick right here. He's a very physical and strong and aggressive corner. He doesn't have great top-end speed, but what he can do is he can throw some, you know, subtle jabs, some haymakers and whatnot to disrupt routes. So I view him as a special teamer working on the gunners on the side if he does find a spot on an NFL roster. So that is ESPN's mock draft. Great it for me. A, B, C, D, or F, what letter grade would you give it? We'll recap it right now. Ke uh, Keandre Coburn from Texas in round three. Trey Palmer out of Nebraska. DeMarvion Overshawn from Texas as well. Kendra Miller in the fourth. Jamie Robinson and Nick Herbig in the fifth. Jerome Carvin in the sixth. And Cam Mitchell in round seven. I give this an A. Why? Because it's a candy land. This is an absolute Mickey Mouse mock draft. Nick Herbig and Jamie Robinson are not going to be on the board in the fifth round. But because they were in Reed's ESPN mock draft, 
Yeah, what's not to love? I mean, maybe A is a bit rich, but the point is is that this is a home run draft for what they're getting in day three, which is a bunch of day two players. So if that actually happens, Andrew Barry without a first and without a second is still going to find a lot of quality players if draft if the actual draft follows suit here. That's it for today's show. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, at Matthew Petey. And hey, if you enjoyed today's show, share it on Twitter. Tag me, Joshua Miller. He's the best at it. He gets shout-outs. So hey, if you want a future shout-out, share today's video on Twitter, and I'll be sure to shout you out.